Hello my fellow game developers and game enthusiasts, I'm Wolfagu. After many months I'm back again with part 3 of trying to learn how to code. Well, kinda. This video isn't so much focused on coding as it is on just learning a new game engine. Previous to this experience I've only ever used Unity to make games, but you know, after certain events, you gotta make sure that you have some backup options available, just in case. Which of course brings us to Godot. Godot? I'm just gonna call it Godot because it sounds more fancy. Ever since the Unity scandal, this engine has practically been blowing up with new users and lots of beginning tutorials as well. I've been wanting to have a look at it for a while since I have a strong feeling that it's just going to get more and more popular over time, kind of like Blender since both are open source with user contributions. If you feel like something is missing from the engine, you can in theory just implement the feature yourself instead of waiting for a company to do it. I mean, at least if you know how to do things like that. I don't, because I'm a complete Godot newbie. The real question now is, how does one get started with learning Godot? Lucky for me, Brackis recently made a comeback to the YouTube scene and not only that, but they released two videos directed at teaching Godot to beginners. I've only gotten around to watching the actual game tutorial, so that's what this video will be about. The tutorial itself is 1 hour and 17 minutes long and it's divided into smaller bite-sized chapters. They also include all the assets needed for the game, so all that's left to do is to get started. First step, of course, was to download the engine. I'd heard that Godot was lightweight, but it still surprised me when the entire download took only two minutes. Since I had been doing some stuff in Unity and in extension C Sharp before, I did consider getting the version with C Sharp support, but I figured that I'll just be following tutorials for a while anyway, so it doesn't really matter. After setting everything up, we're left staring at the empty project. I understood the concept of nodes, scenes, and scripts pretty easily. I mean, it's not rocket science. Setting up the place right was no problem. Setting up the movement node with our first script was no problem, and... What's that? What's that, brother? I'm sorry, but what is this syntax? It looks so ugly. Where are the semicolons and parentheses? Anyways, where was I? Right, setting up the movement was no problem. Um... Hello? Why aren't you moving? After realizing that the character wasn't moving, I rewatched almost all of the tutorial up until that point just to eventually figure out that, get this, I was using the wrong keys. This script automatically works with the arrow keys, not WASD. So I basically spent all that time freaking out over nothing. Moving on from that little mishap, the next step was to set up the world using a tile set, and my god do I love stuff like this. Tile sets are great. It's so easy to quickly make levels with them. And the tile set provided for the tutorial is really cute. Setting up the collisions was super easy as well. It didn't even take me 10 minutes to set up the entire level from start to finish. Next up was some platforms and making them move using the animation player. I assume this is kind of like the timeline in Unity. Either way, it was easy to use and I had my platforms done in just a few minutes. The coins were also easy to make. I'm really just saying that everything was easy, huh? But it's true. It was really easy. When making the coins, I immediately thought that the Area 2D node is kind of the same as setting a collider to a trigger in Unity, so that made it easy to remember. Also, I decided to make the colliders for my coins much bigger since it was annoying to have to jump to precisely collect them. After the coins, it was time to set up the dying. Because what fun is a game if you can't die? For both the coins and the kill zones, you set up the collision mask to make sure that it's the player that's being detected and, again, to make a unity connection, this feels like setting up tags, which I don't really like to do because I often forget it, but it felt a bit more logical here. Anyways, the kill zones introduced timers, which I will make more frequent use of later. We kept things organized by sorting them in empty nodes, then it was time to paint in the background. Brackets made the sky blue, but I'm obsessed with having sunsets wherever I can, so obviously I made the sky blue as well. Just kidding, I made it orange. Moving on to another gameplay element, we added some dangerous slimes. And I have to say, aren't they just adorable? They're so cute it makes me want to run into them. But yeah, they kill you so you shouldn't do that. Other than slimes, we added walking and jumping animations, flipping the sprite depending on direction, which I obviously had to get wrong on the first try. Also, I couldn't walk left because I had spelled it wrong. This is why strings suck. 
Speaking of strings, we added labels for gameplay tips and a score, which was handed by a game manager. I'll be honest and say that I don't really understand the whole autoplay or whatever in the project settings, but I'm sure I'll get the hang of it eventually. Audio is important to every game, so we added music and sound effects, each with their own mixer. This is of course convenient if you want to implement a settings menu for your game. But, for some reason, the music in my game mostly played in the right speaker. It sounds perfectly balanced in the tutorial, so I really don't know what went wrong there, because the sound effects sound just fine. But wait a minute. The tutorial is finished! We made a game! Well, I made a game. You didn't do anything. But that's still really cool! But did you think I was going to stop here? No. This only took me three hours, but the title says five hours. Which begs the question, what did I do for the rest of the two hours? Well, I wanted to mess around a bit on my own to see if I could improve the game a little. First of all, I really needed some coyote time, because the jumping was hella clunky. Did I know how to add this on my own? Nope. So I looked up another tutorial on specifically that. It was a whopping three and a half minutes long, but it worked. It was essentially just a timer. The other thing I wanted to add was a damage system, because it felt a little silly to die the second you touch an enemy, plus I wanted to make use of the cute animations provided in the sprite sheet. So step one was to make a health bar. That was easy. Now I just need to make sure it works. And uh, I don't know if I'm just bad at using Godot, but I watched like five different tutorials and nothing really worked. Most of them were just too complicated for this project or weren't set up properly, I don't know. Oh yeah, and between that I expanded on the level as well. The platforms needed some work, but I wasn't willing to give up on the health bar just yet. I ended up watching this silent tutorial, which was really really simple, and the health finally worked. I even fixed it so that you die immediately when falling off the stage. But there was still one little problem. The hurt and death animations just didn't play properly. I probably spent more time figuring this out than anything else in the entire project. I suspected the whole time that they probably weren't playing because the idol was always playing, but I just couldn't figure out how to solve it. After pulling my hair and checking the documentations, I eventually remembered the coyote timer. If I used the timer, that could delay the idol animation until the hurt and death animations were done playing. So that's exactly what I did. And it didn't work. It was something about the timer infinitely starting and never ending, so after looking that up in forums, I finally finally got it to work. Now the character flashes red when taking damage and it plays the right animation when dying before eventually respawning. The game feels a lot better to play now, both with controls and visual feedback. I may actually have made the game a bit too difficult though, because I haven't been able to collect all the coins yet. I made my sister play it as well and she had this epic death. While making this video, I noticed that the slimes don't have their animations, they kind of just slide around. So I made sure to fix that afterwards. And with that, the game is done. It's obviously the most simple type of game you can make, but it's a game nonetheless. So now that I'm done with this project, I have some final thoughts. First of all, the tutorial was great, and I'll probably watch the video about GD script as well. That being said, if I were to continue using Godot, chances are that I just write the scripts in C Sharp. It just looks better, okay? But yeah, for 2D games, I believe that Godot is a very useful engine, but I'm gonna be honest, for a 3D game I would probably stick with Unity. There are just too many assets and features that I can't function without. All in all, Godot gets a thumbs up from me. It's easy to understand, it's lightweight so you don't have to wait forever for things to compile or download. One of the best things is that you write the code directly in the engine instead of having to switch over to Visual Studio in another window. If you're thinking about giving Godot a try, I highly suggest you do so. It only takes about 5 hours to get somewhat familiar with it, especially if you're thinking of making a 2D game. Speaking of 2D games, me and my brother here at Sword Lake Entertainment are in the final stages of our first commercial game, Mist with the Bay. It's set to release sometime in November, probably, so it would mean a lot if you check it out and wishlist it on Steam. I gotta say, it's a pretty cool game. It's gonna be the biggest visual novel of all time. Anyways, that's all I have to offer for now. I hope to see you again soon.